Well, welcome back, Joe. I'm glad to be here. We were discussing before the cameras rolled that we've been doing shows for at least 30 years, maybe I think so. maybe longer. Yeah. I think so. I've, uh, I've enjoyed all of my shows here with uh, Channel 22 with Herman and Sharon and you and Bob and Bob and Molly, Bob and Molly. Molly. several yeah. times. And you have wonderful partners. Uh, John Fraser was with him last time, and my new best friend here is Patrick Smith. Welcome. Thank you, Arthur. Welcome. And you had a hand in this. Yes, ma'am. Now, didn't this used to be a bigger book? Yeah, my, I had an Ask an Attorney book that was like 13 editions, and it got up to 260 pages. So we started making smaller books with just certain subjects, as mine covered all of Florida law. So we have a... Yeah, there's not a lot of legalese in here. There, right. there, um, I read somewhere that uh, Billy Graham always thought of someone in the eighth grade, you know, mm -hmm. to, to keep his message on that level, which um, might be a reason that he was so successful. Yeah. Because you know, most of our legal documents we try to make very readable, uh, easy to read and understand. Well, this one, if you want readable, this is perfect. Uh, even the, the font and even the size of it and... Um, I cannot recommend this highly enough, and we are offering both of these books to you for $25. I'm telling you, it could save you a lot of money um, when you go to an attorney, or if you never go to an attorney, you'll have some answers. So I had guess you had a hand in uh, this one. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Very good. Okay. I have, um, I need an hour with you, really, but I want to talk, uh, you have a thing in here called hap hypotheticals, which is very valuable. I have a friend who's working on her will and all, and um, there's one there's one child that owes her quite a bit of money that's not being paid at the present. The other one doesn't. So does she deduct that? Well, I tell you, I had a, a client like that this morning, and what uh, the end result of our conversation was, I prepared a promissory note for the child to sign. It was made payable to the trust. So in effect, the money that the child owes will be part of his share. So he'll get the promissory note forgiven as part of his third. So if, for example, if the promissory note added everything in, it was a $300,000 estate and there were three equal shares and everybody got 100, the child that had the promissory note would get his $50,000 forgi uh, forgiven and the other, he would get 50 more thousand and the other two children would get 100,000. So it would kind of equalize it. Uh, we have different ways to do that, though. I'm mm -hmm. sure Patrick has other ways that he's probably pursued it as well. Okay, what if that child, you're a Christian, and this child is just living everything you do not believe? Do you want to make a statement in your will? Yeah, a lot of times parents want to leave a message to the child and let them know that they love them, that they're their child, and they're going to provide a legacy. For Are they going to cut them out? Sometimes. Uh, in, in, a, in certain situations, that certainly becomes an option, but a lot of times they put sort of uh, restrictions on the wealth and have a trustee who's an independent party manage the wealth for the child while they continue their maturing process. Uh, have you ever had people cut close relatives out because of a lifestyle? Absolutely. You got a child that's totally addicted? Mm -hmm. Are you going to leave them a bunch of money well, so they can uh, buy drugs? Well, there are special ways to leave them money, but have it stretched out over a long period of time and subject to uh, mandatory and random testing, and then if the addiction pops up, that their distribution would be suspended, but the money can be used for medical rehab. Mm -hmm. So you can do something like that. You can omit them, and, and the will is also a great place to leave your testimony. So the last thing your children read would be what you wrote. So if you write in there, I believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and I, this is a, kind of a message to them that hopefully they would too, you have a paper like that. I yeah, have a copy of it. Yeah, I wrote an article about that, right. Um, have you ever had any feedback from that kind of thing where somebody left their, really left their testimony and are sometimes you guys there when, when the will is read? Absolutely. I've been there when the will is read, and it's a powerful moment when that loved one, as Jesus said, has entered into new life. And at that critical time to have the testimony read of that departed loved one is a powerful moment and I'm sure has led others to make a decision for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What if you have a child that uh, you really can't trust? Can you, can you put a trustee over them while they got two or three kids that are totally normal and you can... Uh, yeah, you have to be very careful in who the trustee is that you choose for your documents. And you want somebody that's uh, trustworthy, can get the job done. 
that probably has a relationship somewhat with the other children. Um, some people do choose to have an outside trustee when they know their family is not going to get along. And it's just like our uh, political party today where one side's, you know, 49% is always going to hate the other 51%. That's the room I want to be in. <laughs> so, is yeah. that a surprise sometimes? <clears throat> they all come to read the will, hey, you're not in charge. Uh, okay. Sometimes that is a surprise. Uncle but Larry is A lot of them think, well, thank goodness I don't have that job. And I'm glad some professional, uh, Patrick and I serve as trustee for a uh, fair amount of trust, but the, uh, they also have an option of a corporate trustee. Uh, but most people do choose family members as their trustee. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to go over some things that um, we have before. Uh, is the first thing you need a power of attorney? What, what's well, that's part of the package. Uh, so you need the whole package, right? Most clients need the whole package. Trust, will, power of attorney, health care, surrogate, living will. Yeah, and th those are really pretty basic now. Well, that's we, we would call, I think Patrick and I would call that the basic estate plan. Uh huh. Okay. What about um, prenuptial agreements? I'm not planning to get married, but th th but being a, a, a devout Christian, I think okay. If you're getting married, you go in all the way. But also, at my age. <clears throat> I would want whatever my husband and I accumulate, my husband is deceased, to go to our children. And that, that can be a can of, can of worms, can't well, it? It's a fantastic point, Arlene. And the prenuptial agreement and the postnuptial agreement for those already married is no longer the pre-divorce contest document that it was in the 1980s. And indeed, what we've witnessed over the last 30, almost 40 years is this tracking of the prenuptial and postnuptial into an extension of the estate planning tools, whereby it neutralizes certain spousal elective share rights and state constitutional homestead rights that would otherwise run roughshod over an existing estate plan, producing surprises at the end. So a good prenuptial or postnuptial agreement can eliminate those surprises to effectuate your client's intent. And I, I know you're both <coughs> devout Christians. Uh, I, I would think, you know, in your marriage when you're 20 and your first marriage, you, you, you go in and you share everything. But it gets a little different down the road, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I, actually, I recommend pre- or post-marital agreements to all of my clients that are in a second or third marriage, for example. And it's really the only way to protect assets. Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, it's not the, the spouse that causes the trouble, it's their children mm -hmm. who might have their power of attorney. And there are spousal rights that come into play if you don't do this. And now, uh, it used to be, you could if, if I had a house in my name and I got married and I didn't have a premarital agreement, my wife would have the right to live there for life, but now she would have the right to sell it, which is a fairly new law, and take half of the proceeds. So if I wanted that house to go down to my family line, I've lost it by not taking the opportunity to do a, the, the premarital agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just join me, I'm talking to attorneys Joe Pippen and Patrick Smith. Uh, they have written this book, Florida Estate Planning Handbook. I highly, highly recommend it because it, it's so understandable and it can really save you a lot of grief down the road. The information's on your screen. I'm going to send both of these to you for a gift of $25 to homekeepers. And um, I don't know what a lawyer costs per hour, but uh, this book could answer a lot of questions uh, even before you need an attorney. So the address is on your screen, also the 800 number, 1-800-229-0059 if you use a, a credit card or a debit card. Um, because you know, gentlemen, with this program, I, number one, want to see everybody go to heaven. But I want them to have a good time here on earth, you know, a, a good experience. And I was looking uh, just recently because I've known the scripture for so long and John said, I pray above all else that you be in good health uh, and prosper as your soul prospers. So soul prosperity is number one. But then I got thinking the other, the health and the prosperity, we might not need to be involved in that. I don't think we can expect God to drop it on us. <laughs> and so that's why I have people like you and we have financial planners and we have a lot of health experts on this program. So. Uh, that's kind of what we're all about if you're, uh, if you're a new viewer. Um, 
One of you, uh, I'll throw it to Patrick, uh, explain exactly what a trust is. I know when I first started hearing about this, it sounded so, so complicated because I think I've come up through a, a period of time where all there was was a will and then these other things were added on. It rem throws me back instantly to my days at Chapel Hill with Professor Orth, my wills and trusts professor there. He said, think about it conceptually. One is a piece of paper, it's labeled will. One is labeled trust, but they're both pieces of paper. What's the difference? And to really understand the difference, you have to understand the difference in the concept of probate. Probate is how assets go from a dead person's name to the appropriate living beneficiary. The concept behind the living trust is to remove the dead person's name from the equation. Think of the trust in your mind's eye sort of as a safe. You can place assets into it, take them out. Most of these trusts are revocable. You can change the terms and conditions. But the moment you enter into new life and step into eternity, you now have a conveyance of assets from a living entity, the trust, to more living entities, your beneficiaries, thereby removing the deceased person from the process and avoiding the probate. That, you know, that's a great explanation. Thank you. Yeah, it really is. And uh, it gives meaning to the word living. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what kind of nightmares will it save you? <laughs> uh, well, when you say probate, I see a judge and a courtroom and uh, maybe losing half my money in the process. Well, it's expensive and it takes a long time. And probate is just simply the process of getting assets out of a deceased person's name through the court system. And with a living trust, you avoid all that because they're not, as Patrick says, they're not in the name of a deceased person. But this is what I, I, I want our viewers to understand that if you don't have these documents and make sure they're legal and everything they should be, and it's very simple because I've done it, I've done it twice, I did it for my mother, I've done it for myself. Um, the, the whole probate nightmare, there are people involved that don't give a rip, a rip about you or your family. They just have a few laws they have to follow. And what does it cost? Uh, how much of a, a chunk can they take out of your assets? Well, I would say the typical probate fees are 3 to 6%. Oh, I thought there would be a lot more than that if they go through court. The, the, the typical fee is 3 to 6%. We, we have minimum fees involved. So, I mean, a person with a small estate could be stuck with a higher percentage be because of the minimum fee. But you know, you take 6% times a, a $500,000 probate estate, that's $30,000 you could avoid for under, we have flat fees on all the things we do and for less than $1,000 you, you could get to avoid that totally. Also Joe, one time you really addressed something that uh, I've, I, it really stuck with me. There's a lot of people viewing right now, they think, oh, I don't have much, I don't have anything. and most people have more than they realize, don't they? Yeah, you sit down and add it up, it's considerable. And again, if you, the minimum fee is uh, with costs are over $3,000, why wouldn't you spend a lot less than that to, to avoid the whole process, make it easier for your family? If they're the trustees and personal representatives, you've made mm -hmm. their job extremely easy compared to going through probate, meeting with an attorney, having the process last up to a year or longer. You can avoid all that with proper planning with a trust. And that, that book there is a very simple explanation of how you can avoid it and make mm -hmm. it easy for everyone. Um. The other book, by the way, is about asset protection and protecting the, the entire state. The elder law. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to protect the entire state if one were to go into a nursing home and save that $8,000 a month expense there. Yeah, this is, a, this is a valuable book, and you get both of them. Uh, for uh, $25. Patrick, wouldn't it be a good idea for our viewers right now who've uh, really never, maybe they've considered this but haven't done anything, wouldn't it be a good idea to sit down at the table with a pencil and figure out what they're worth? I bet they'd be shocked. Okay, we got this much in the house and we got this much in the bank and we got this car. And yeah, absolutely. We walk clients through this who have never done the estate planning process and they're quite often they're surprised when they add everything up to see, my gosh, I have a significant amount of wealth and I have no plan for it. So they realize the importance of putting together all these instruments discussed in the book. <laughs> um, Joe was my mom's attorney. You guys had a good time. She? Oh yeah, she was a, she was well, she was like 98 or 99 last time you talked to her. and she You tease her a little bit, she gave it right back to you. <laughs> <laughs> she was something else because she, uh, she would keep trying to get me to take some money. 
I would never take a dime from my mother. I just wouldn't do that. But she, I take her to the doctor or something. Well, you write yourself a check. You write yourself a check. And and uh, boy, I think when you're dealing with the elderly, you you've got to be so far above board. And because you hear nightmare stories, how they can be really taken taken advantage of. Um, if all you have is a will, then you do go to court, correct? If you die with assets just in your name, in the deceased person's name, yes. That's the only way to get it out, is through the probate process. So uh, any married couple with everything in both names, if the first what do they one, need? Well, if it's all jointly with right of survivorship, there's probate upon the second death, not the first. But is it a good idea knowing that a lot of things can happen? Uh, yeah, well, I would say Patrick and I would probably both tell you that 90% plus of our clients that own all things joint would do a joint trust. Because you, you, that takes care of you both die at the same time or right. one becomes incapacitated and the other one dies during that process. It's, it's harder on the health care provider sometimes than it is the one that's not, not, not competent. Well, the, the most uh, valuable thing you have are your children. Now, what if you have very young children and, God forbid, uh, parent, both parents would be gone? Is this kind of a possibility included in a will that, and a trust? That's one of the biggest misconceptions we deal with daily is that I'm a young person, so I don't need to have these planning instruments in place. I would argue it's exactly the opposite. If you're young, especially with young children, these are more important to you uh, than when you're in your retired years because you want to make sure you've designated who's going to raise your child, who's going to provide wealth to them to raise them, how will the wealth be distributed to them, as they mature. I mean, think about it. In a practical sense, we're talking about a child who has lost both parents. So having a good plan in place is going to take an already tumultuous world and make it as smooth as it could be considering. And when you think about the fact that there's no planning in that scenario, uh, the hurricane continues. So having good planning for minor children is absolutely critical. I had a client today that has a young child and they named the, the father, her father, my client's father. As the, as the guardian. Now, he was 73, and this young couple couldn't think of a backup. So I put a blank line. I sent them drafts of the documents and Ooh. put a blank line for them to think of that before we finished. Yeah. Uh, and let me just say one That's other right. thing. Uh, Patrick Henry put in his will yeah. that if, I, if this is all I've given my children are these assets I had here on earth, they have nothing. But if they had had the gift of Jesus Christ during their lifetime, they have everything. Perfect. Perfect. I just got a chill when you were talking. What if, what if some relative, some person could horn in on a situation like this and you would never want that person to raise your child but because they're relative and they we're almost out of time but oh be sure you make sure those minor children are taken care of you'll have to come back because uh, there's it. more things to. Uh, but remember both of these for $25 might be the best investment you could ever make and I'm sorry we're out of time but we are so join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper God bless you